Hi, welcome to today's uh, market update. I've got Dr. Steve Garth here with me. Thanks for coming along, Steve. How are Pleasure, you? Nigel. I'm very well, thank you. Very close to Christmas. It's been a massive year. Everyone's looking forward to a nice rest and uh, Australian summer. Uh, the weather's looking a bit better at least, but we've, it is. we've been through everything this year. Um, you know, from uh, ups and downs. Uh, so give me a bit of a, an update on really the year we've had and um, where, where, where we're going to finish off the year. Yeah, let's do an end of year review, even though we're only going to go to the end of November. I'm going to start with Australia, Nigel. Now, as everyone knows, it's been a really volatile year in the markets, but you might be surprised to know that Australia's actually finishing with a 2.2% return year to date. So it's a positive return in the Australian market. What? Hey, what? I thought, I thought it was down 20% there. What, so, what, what happened? I've been asleep all year. Well, you've been listening to the media. <laughs> That's your problem, Nigel. <laughs> it's a positive return. But Nigel, to your point, it's all happened in the last eight weeks. Mm. Back on September the 30th, it was down by minus 9.6%, mm. and that's as low as it got. Yeah. But we've had like a 13% return yeah. just in the last eight weeks. Extraordinary. Yeah, very extraordinary. I mean, if you were sitting here in June, July, you'd be almost, you wouldn't believe it to think that the markets could be even, if not positive, by the end of the year. It is bizarre how markets can work. It really is. You really wouldn't have thought that the Australian market would be positive. Mm. Now Australia has uh, held up probably due to, you know, we've obviously got some uh, upside there with our mining sector, the banks have sort of come back, and we didn't have the big tech exposure, I suppose. We didn't so. have the big tech exposure, and we look at the chart here, you can see Europe's down by, ooh, you know, over 6%. Mm. Uh, the US market, it's down by 13%, but it was down by 24%. Yeah. That's in terms of the 30s, that's like a serious bear market. Around, yeah. And to your point, the big tech stocks, they're currently down by 24% but they were down as much as 32%. So you can see in the last eight weeks, we've had this rally across all markets. It's about you know a 10% rally across all markets. Yes, and now in a year where almost every asset class around the world has been negative for most of the year, one of the uh, most difficult asset classes to understand, especially when it goes down, is bonds. So where are bonds, where have bonds ended up after being down quite heavily during the year? Yeah, it's a really good point. It's certainly a shock to I just had everyone you know, bonds are meant to be the defensive asset. Typically, when equities go down, bonds go up. But with the extraordinary increase in inflation and the consequent increase in interest rates, that's pushed bond prices right down. Now, the good news is the rally we talked about in equities over the last few weeks, it's also happening in the bond market. So in the chart you can see now, you can see yields at the start of the year going up and up and up. When yields go up, prices go down. Yep. But you can see in the last couple of weeks, it's kind of reached an apex mm. and it's turning, both Australian and US 10 year yields are turning around. So while the numbers there, the year to date numbers are, are, are not great, it's been a return of just over 2% in the last eight weeks. Mm. A year to uh, forget, uh, perhaps, uh, luckily it hasn't, it's not going to close off too bad, but it still hasn't been fun time for investors. And of course now everyone can sort of get to the end of the year. And hopefully you think, well, it hasn't been as bad as it could have been. Um, what are we looking at next year? There's still lots of concerns. Inflation's, you know, in some, Europe, I think it's over 9%, in Australia, 7%. Uh, we're seeing you know, house prices really come off. Uh, there's going to be all these mortgages come off next year. What impact that's going to have? What's, what should people be thinking about going into 2023? First of all, Nigel, there will be uh, some interest rate increases next year. Uh, probably three, maybe four. You, you still think they're going to raise rates? Look, rates time? will go up probably yeah. February, March, maybe May or June. Okay. But yeah. that's about it. Yeah. And the markets kind of price that in. Mm. The other thing, what they call the terminal rate, you know, what will be the peak mm. interest rate? Market's got a handle on that here mm. in Australia, mm. about 3.85. Might be a bit less, might be a bit more, but it's around that number. Mm. Trying to find this terminal rate is causing mm. a lot of uh, market volatility. But the thing is, it's close. And the last thing we should say, Nigel, the audience will hear a lot about a recession mm. in the US uh, and maybe even here in Australia. But I want to reassure the audience that the equity market and the bond market know all about this and have priced that in as well. Mm. So what can we say about next year? Bonds have probably reached their limit. In other words, yields are probably not going to go any higher. Mm. So in other words, where bonds were earning 1% or 2%, they're now earning 5 or 6% in income. Mm. And if the economy, uh, global economy does slow towards the end of next year, then interest rates, believe it or not, mm. will start to come down again. Mm. That'll push bond prices up further. House prices, you're right. They're probably going to keep coming off uh, globally. 
um, over the next, say, 12 months. Uh, and the last one is equities. That one's a really hard one to know because even though the equity market's priced in what it knows about interest rates and you know inflation and terminal rates, we don't know kind of the long-term consequences e economically of what that could cause. Well, let's hope next year is uh, less volatile than this year, but we never know. And um, this year has been a really good lesson in diversification, even though all asset classes were down at the same time. Our diverse portfolios have actually held up really well. Um, and it's actually, you know, really pleasant to see that at the end of the year there, um, you know, capital's obviously been retained, there's been no blow-ups, um, people are still getting income, and in fact income levels are increasing. So for retirees, it's less to worry about perhaps than this time last year. Yes. For younger clients, um, you know, the interest rates going up is going to be, going to be a concern, I think, in the next, into the next year. I, I think that's right. But we should also say, Nigel, if you're a younger investor too, you've got a lot of time ahead of you, and Absolutely. the one thing we do know about markets is over long term, yeah. they do go up. Yeah. Well, Dr. Steve Garth, it's been a great year having you on board. This is the first year we've had you on board as our independent chair of our investment committee. These videos have been fantastic, add a lot of value. Thanks so much, have a great Christmas yourself. Um, hope uh, 2023 is a great year for you. Thank you, Nigel, and Merry Christmas to everyone, and a great new year. Great, thanks.